Hey everyone, today we're going to be explaining electricity. We're going to use water as an example instead of the real thing. It's a lot safer. Uh, first, let's define volts. Now, volts is actually the amount of push that electricity has. You, you probably know some of the common terms, 12 volts and 110 in a house. And this water here doesn't have a lot of push. So let's liken this more to a car battery. Okay, so what are amps? Well, amps is actually the amount of water or the amount of uh, electrons flowing through a cable. And you can actually see this, in this instance, as not a lot, but, but there's enough to move this wheel around. Okay, and then we have watts. And watts is simply multiplication of volts times amps will give you your watts. And that's usually the definition of power and electricity. So if you have a, a toaster and it's 1500 watts, it's using 110 volts. And then you would divide that, uh, the wattage by the volts, and that would tell you how many amps it would have. All right, so what we're gonna do now is increase the voltage. I'm just gonna be using my finger And you can see this homemade wheel will turn a lot faster because of the increased voltage or the increased water pressure in this instance. All right, so a household has 100 TID volts and you see the amount of water, it's the same. So in this instance, we can get a lot more work done by increasing the voltage inside the house uh, it wouldn't take us as much amps. So the same amount of water, which would be our amps. And we get more work done just by increasing the voltage. One thing to be concerned about with amps is that the electrons that flow through the cable will actually heat it up if there's enough of them. So what they do to uh, circumvent this is just increase the cable size. So if you think about your light, light cord, it's only pulling, let's say, 60 watts. So it doesn't need a lot of amps to pass through it. But if you have something like a, a hair dryer or a heater, you probably notice they generally have thicker wire gauges to support them, especially heaters because they're on, on a lot longer period of time, uh, unlike a hair dryer. But if you re reduce the voltage, say, is in a car with using only 12 volts it will require a whole lot more amps you see we don't have a lot of pressure here it would require a whole lot more water to get the same job done so if you would have a uh, a toaster let's say it's 1500 watts and you divide that by 110 volts I'm just doing this without a calculator. You're going to get around 14 amps. And that's a good bit of juice. The wires in the house are, are rated at 20 amps. They're using 12 gauge. That's the actual thickness of the wire. But for the same thing in a vehicle, uh, it would take 144 amps. And the wire thickness would be likened to the thickness of the wires supplying power to your house. So that's one thing to consider. The wires in the, in the vehicle might be pretty small, except like, for instance, the starter. But generally, a, how, a car doesn't consume a lot of power. If it does, say, for instance, uh, AC, they get their power from a belt instead of from electricity. I'm not con talking about the blower. I'm actually talking about the actual compressor so your starter for example needs a lot of amps but if you was to have a 110 volt starter you could turn the same starter over a lot easier because of the increased voltage now Remember when you were a kid and there was a merry-go-round? 
Well, this, this is going to be the definition of hertz. For the standard household, we have 60 hertz coming in, and all that is is a bump. Uh, electricity comes on, electricity goes off, and in this country, it's at 60 cycles per second, 60 hertz. All right, so when you were a kid and you were trying to move that playground around, generally you would follow it around and you had a top speed of what you could actually get to. But later on you got smart and you started bumping the rails as they would pass along and you could make it go a lot faster by bumping those rails and just in it still, right? So this is Hertz. Hertz, Hertz comes in, it just, for motors anyways, it'll bump, 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 bump. It turns on and off. Now, mind you, it turns on and off at 60 cycles per second. And DC, direct current, it stays on the whole time. And I've been shocked with 110, I've been shocked with like, say for instance, 60 volts DC. And when you're being shocked, you can actually tell uh, the amount, it, the bumping is actually present. DC will hurt a lot more because it stays on the whole time. When should you worry? Well, in general, uh, 12 volts won't shock you. If you were young once, maybe you put a nine volt battery to your tongue, and because of the increased moisture, that electricity would pass through your tongue, but it really wasn't a lot of electricity. Uh, amps is what actually hurts people. So, with the tasers, you can see them often 40,000, 50,000 volts, and this disrupts the uh, the nervous system, but there's not a lot of amps. The amps is actually what would kill you. And, and, and safety-wise, if you were to be shocked in just your hand, it's, it's pretty safe. And what a lot of people don't realize is if you're using two hands to work on something and it's live, that electricity can go from one hand through your heart and to the other hand and another problem you could have if your if your feet aren't insulated it could go from your hand down to your feet and this could pass through your heart as well so keep those things in mind I had another video we was working on a Prius and it was pretty emphatic about using just one hand that way if you were to get shocked it would just be traveling through your fingers and not through your heart all right so as far as voltage is concerned I, i've got a multimeter and this multimeter doesn't really get excited it doesn't start yelling until you hit the 20 volt mark and the reason for that is at about 20 volts it really starts to <laughs> get through your system so anything above 20 volts you really have to be careful with and this is another reason why you'll see that cars are 12 volts now if you were to have a lot of conductivity such as a wrench and you cross that 12 volt battery you can make that wrench glow red hot because the electricity will throw through, flow through that wrench very easily let's talk about high voltage situations so remember when I said that the amount of amps that's carried in a wire could actually melt or burn the wire well power has to get to your house somehow and what the power companies do in order to get all that power to all those people is they increase the voltage some of the transmissions lines that are running overhead can have upwards of 350,000 volts now let's think about this for a second if only 100 amps were to travel through those large lines. I know it's a lot more than a thousand amps, but if only a hundred amps travel through them, they could be carrying 35 million volts, 35 million watts. Volts times amps equals watts. This is one thing, if you remember it, it'll improve your life. So realize there's a lot more power that can run through these lines than 35 million watts. So how does it affect us? Where can we apply it? Well. One thing that a lot of people are doing these days is using solar. And if you're using a large bank of solar, if you run them in parallel, uh, what happens is 
you still only have the 12 volts. And the 12 volts has a lot of amps. So if you have 10 panels and 12 volts, uh, and it's 8 amps each, by the time it gets to the end of the run, it's going to be 80 amps. And you're going to need a larger diameter wire. And that larger diameter wire costs a whole lot more than this thin stuff because of the copper. But if you series connect those, by the time you get to the end of the run, it's going to be 120 volts, 12 times 10, 120 volts, but the amps doesn't change. So in order to do this, you only need a thin wire because it's still 8 amps. You didn't increase the uh, amps, you increased the volts. So this can be very beneficial. In fact, a lot of vehicles, uh, the alternators, they could be 110 volts if you took out the, the rectifying diode. That's a whole nother subject. But they don't want to use 110 volts generally in automotive because it could be dangerous for people. So this is why the Prius battery is engulfed in metal, has stickers, uh, do not open unless you're fully qualified. So this is a few things to keep in mind before you start working on your house. If you have any other videos you want me to do, if you need some help with electricity in your house or some with vehicles, let me know. I just wanted to put this, this video out there. I wasn't sure whether to do a series on it, but electricity is, is pretty easy. Uh, the wire size, the voltage, all of it, it's just a few terms that need to know and understand. Just remember this. Remember this one formula. You can do it backwards and forwards. Volts times amps equals watts. If you know the watts and you know the volts, you can find them out the amps. You take watts divided by volts, it'll give you your amps, which will tell you what size wire you need. So all this information is very useful. Hope this helps. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.